sniff, sniff the, uh, the salts in front of the screen. It'd be funnier if you did. <laughs> I don't really want to do this. Not fair. <laughs> oh, this sucks. No wonder I don't use it. How does Joy Conley live on that shit? How are you wider than me? You're at freaking 90. I'm like 105 kilos, 108 kilos or something. I'm sure. Yeah. Have to be wider. Stop pressing the shoulders again too big. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chad. I'm Lee. We are the other guys, and again, we're in week two, and we still don't know what we're talking about. Now, we, lucky for us, Lee put up our first cut from last week yesterday, Yeah. and we didn't get too much hate. We only got one unlike on YouTube, so we're going to try a little bit harder this week, see if we can get two unlikes. I'm sure we can uh, manage that. You going to say something controversial this week? Like, um, what can I say? I don't know. Covered Australia's strongest woman. You got it right. We, there's nine competitors, yeah. we guessed the exact nine names they released them last night. Yeah. It was also released this morning, the nine names of the men that are competing this year for Australia's Strongest Man. So that's the side event to the females, right? That's the right. Them. So who's competing, Lee? Uh, we've got nine people, so we've yep. got Coco, yep. Luke Reynolds, yep. Matthew Bert. Sells. No. No? I don't think so. I think Sells didn't sign up. I could have that wrong. I've got my listings on my phone, which is recording right now. <laughs> Vernon? Yep. Uh, Nathan Zingman. Yep. Uh, Will Rogers from Tasmania. Yep. Thomas Wren. As you said, Luke Reynolds. Oh, Tyson's come back again as well. Yeah, Tyson's Tyson. Tyson Morrissey. Uh, Corey Polkinghorn. Andrew Fraser. Andrew Fraser. Yeah, no Matt Selves this time around. Well, the first time in a couple of years he's missed it, and he was the winner last year at Arnold's as well, right? Yeah, in the heavyweights. Yeah, a few new names for ASM this year. Uh, a few returning as well, so we've got like uh, Will Rogers from Tasmania, his first time showing. He came in seventh in the Arnold's this year in the Open Men. Vernon came sixth, Corey came third, Andrew Fraser came tenth. Also Fraser's first Australia's Strongest Man. Tyson, he's played his best placing in second in Australia's Strongest Man a couple of years ago. Vernon as well, best placing in his second place in Australia's Strongest Man two years ago. Yep. Luke Reynolds, uh, I know he's been doing it for a long time. I recall he came third in 2014. 15 or 2016. Uh, this will so be his first Australian comp in what? Five three years? years? Three, four years. It looks, yeah. Luke's avoided competing in the country for a little while. He's been pretty, <laughs> pretty outspoken about that. Yeah. So good to see him back in the in the midst, midst of things. That's pretty much it. Uh, I think we've covered all the names there and, and, and a little bit of their history. Oh, and Coco. He's also came second last year in Australia, the strongest man in third the year before. Yeah. So we've got three guys or four guys there that could have come second in the past. So they're all looking for their first win. There is no current previous winners there of Australia's Strongest Man. No Rongo, no Eddie. Yeah, and, and obviously Warwick's pretty much retired now. He's voluntarily yep. gone. Okay, so from that, just like the women, same events. First up, the cool looking Rip, Rip Gauntlet from Stand to Submit. Uh, your thoughts? I'd have to back the giant people. Yeah, it's probably based on history. <laughs> Luke Reynolds, he, let's see, 6'6", six, six, and he's known for his grip stuff. Yeah. Um, and then you've got other tall people like Corey, uh, he's about 6'4". Yeah. Uh, Nathan Zygmunt, uh, mm -hmm. also tall. Uh, Andrew Fraser, probably 6'2", 6'3", as well. Yeah. It's actually a pretty tall field. I think Tyson and Coco would be the shortest of the group. It's going to be a real tough one. Uh, and actually, I actually have to say, going into this, uh, Coco is probably going to lose a few points because he's the smaller of the group. Uh, yeah, if, you look, if you're looking at the size of the guys, I really don't know how they're going to place because I don't know how these dumbbells are going to play out for these athletes. They're all brand new. So I don't know how grippy they're going to be, how slippery they're going to be, what's uh, Mason done with the handles. Yeah, well Coco's got a good grip, but then it's a, what, two and a half or almost three inch Yeah, I think Mason's only the three inch, so, you know, I, I don't don't know uh, where we're going to be, but for those wanting this first place, they're really going to have to place well uh, in the first couple of events because we've got three thick handle axle events straight up. So yeah. the first night, the this dumbbell, and then first thing the next morning, the maxes. Axle overhead, yep. followed by deadlift. the deadlift with an axle again. Such a hard thing to pick. Like no one posts grip events because yeah. no one wants to see them, and yeah. no, one, no one really cares. <laughs> and as we get to, and, 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 and on that, we move to the next event straight away, which is the axle overhead. And just on what you said, nobody posts what they're shit at. Yeah. And I have seen like a handful at most of axle 
clean and presses from the, this this whole field in training. Corey put one up the other day at 145, I think, pretty yeah. comfortably as well. Other than that, I don't think I've seen anyone put any videos up. Uh, I've seen Vernon. Vern, oh, yeah, yeah. I think it was 140, maybe 160. He moves really well, so oh, okay. he'll, 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 he'll clean whatever he needs to. It's just a matter of he can finalise the press. So yeah. he'll do that really well. He'll be at the end of it. There'll be a split jerker still, possibly, in Australia's from this man. Good. Need it. And in an opens. Good. So. Need it. Throw the cat on the pigeons goes again. But your legacy lives on, Lee. Yes. Uh, who's your pick? That's probably the hardest one to pick. Yeah. If it was yeah. me, if there was no clean involved, I'd pick Coco straight away. Yeah. He seems to have the greatest pressing strength of the lot. Haven't seen much of his cleans. Uh, he hasn't shared any videos of his cleans. You'd expect with his big hands and nine years of experience, you'd expect Reynolds to be up there. Vernon moves incredibly well. Uh, he would probably be one you'd be definitely looking at to be right at the top there as well. I, I, I'm probably expecting we're going to be somewhere around 160, 170. There's going to be a, a, a lot of people tying around there. 10 kilo jumps, probably starting at 140. I haven't got the rule sheet. I think you had it last week. So. I had it. Last We're not that that organised this week. Week two, we know, know too much already. We uh, we're throwing the paperwork out the window. Uh, I think the specific event rules will get posted in about three or four weeks. Okay, so probably two weeks after comp. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Arnold's fashion. So. <laughs> you Are you having a dig? You've been controversial. Yeah. Give it back. Good, good, good. <laughs> we can get the bump up those dislikes on the video. Yeah, um, I'm probably I, I'm leaning based on Corey's lift last week. He's going to be up there. Coco would have to be a favourite. Uh, Reynolds uh, and um, Vernon as well. I think would be the ones you'd be looking at. Thomas Rand is a bit of an unknown. Very strong. Don't see any of his overhead training. He does a lot of bench press in his training videos. So really hard to pick there. Okay, third event. Axel deadlift, which they start at 260 or 280. 260. 260. 260, yeah. 280, 300, 320 for reps. Okay, so four reps to get to the top weight, and yep. then they go for as many reps as possible. Yep. I'm guessing 60 seconds for them to complete the event. Yep. So if you look at straight away at the biggest deadlifters in the field, then I think right now that's Corey and Kogo. They tied last year, 370 kilos each. Yep. Um, based on the way they're both deadlifting, they're probably going to come close to tying again. It's just going to be who's probably fitter and get that fifth or sixth rep. Missing one big name there. Oh, Tyson! Oh, God! <laughs> yeah, sorry. He's, he's got the uh, biggest deadlift of the lot, 380 these days, isn't he? I forgot that he was in the field. Well, yeah, three quarters of the way up with 400. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until he popped a strap. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Tyson. Okay, so I, I, Tyson's known to do really well at reps as well. Yeah, I don't think Axel's going to throw anybody on this. I think biggest deadlift's going to be biggest deadlift. Cool. You, um, you think Tyson's got this one? Tyson will be up there. So there's only 10 kilos there. between the top three lifters there. Yeah. So, anyone's on the day, or are you calling a clear winner? Tyson and Coco. Tyson and Coco. And then it also depends on who comes where on the event. I'll agree with you, so they know how, how many reps they have to do. Okay. I feel like deadlifts will come down to that. Okay. Because oh. there is a time frame, so. I reckon the winner's going to pull six reps, and it will either be Coco or Tyson. Yeah, I, I think they'll time out. Um, and like, I think whatever reps they get, they'll be able to do more. Yep. But it'll just be a matter of time. Mm -hmm. It takes so long to get to that top weight. Yep. Bit of black magic could be Corey in there as well. He's, uh, he hasn't shared as many training videos, but his deadlift seems to keep going up by heaps each year, so well, uh, not sure there. Okay, fourth event, loading medley? Yep. Cool. So same as last week, as we mentioned, but obviously the weight's significant heavier. They start, they got a 150 kilo stone, 140 kilo sandbag. Uh, the next one's the timber. Piece of timber yeah, we don't know the weight of. Piece of timber, no. Probably 130-ish so. kilos, as soon as they start getting much more than that's hard to carry, they're just massive. Yeah. And then a uh, tyre. So we've seen Jason and Coco try this huge tractor tyre this week. Awkward as hell to carry, they've stood in it farmer style to carry it, and then tried to load it over the bar. I'm guessing the tyre will be smaller circumference than that one. Go back and check their Instagrams if you want to see what that one looks like, but I'm guessing we're probably going to see something like the solid forklift tyre they used in World's Strongest Man 20. 15 in Malaysia, which is a 160 kilo tire, probably not going to be quite that heavy, but diameter wise, probably 1 to 1.2 meters high, yep. at most 1.2, something they can still throw over their shoulder, something they can still throw, throw over a bar. Well, it's not going over a bar, it's uh, oh, onto a uh, platform. Platform, tray back, you. Ah, secret insider knowledge there, Lee. Someone's got to get the knowledge out. Ah, so tray back. You, there's, 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 there's some new stuff. I didn't know that. Yeah. So thank you for sliding that one in there. So the secret secret squirrel news is the loading into the back of a ute, which we don't know about yet. Okay, so don't tell anyone. <laughs> I'll cop it. That's fine. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, it should be probably under 1.2, but yeah. between a meter and 1.2. Tray, tray back should be a bit lower. If it's a normal ute, we're probably looking at about one, 90 centimeters to one meter, and yep. 1.2 if it's a larger four-wheel drive ute at most. And go, so, go by what Aaron and Mason said on the video the other day. It's maximum 1.2. Yeah. So it's going to be lower than that. And then they said sandbag was the biggest they could find. So I'm guessing 160. 160 server uh, seems to be able to go up to that and they seem to be everywhere for their sandbags. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to be able to find a big 181 from World's yeah. Strongest Man. Or and whatever that was. Watching ASA Nationals this year, we sure saw how much the 160 sandbag slowed down people as it was. Yeah, and it'll be third implement. Yeah. In stone, timber, <laughs> then 160 sandbag. So a lot of people might just get stuck on that. It's going to be rough. Be Real um, rough. Okay. There's a lot of heavy breathers. There's a lot of unfit. <laughs> Open way guys, so... Are you saying the open class is not quite as fit as they could be? You're looking for those extra way. dislikes on the video, aren't you, Lee? No, I'm just reading the names, and I'm just like, yep, that's probably about 30 seconds and done. You're gonna go call the top one, top three, top two, tie? Um, Are they all gonna finish it? Is anyone gonna finish it? If that tie is massive, then obviously the bigger guys are gonna be able to get around it better. Yep. Um, They're really, that's really important, and the 160 sandbags are the same. Yeah, I think the, if the sandbag's 160 or 160 plus, I think yep. that's going to stop probably half of them. Yep. I think they'll just they'll stand over it. They'll they'll just stick it up. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much guessing everyone gets through the first two, so the third one's going to change the game pretty quickly. We've seen Coco training in the gym with a very similar setup, but the weight's probably not anywhere near as heavy as the comp. Like 140 sandbag, 150 stone. The tyre is big and awkward, and a 110 yep. kilo log. He gets through it okay, but we're probably looking at... I'm, I'm picking him to finish it, as long as the tyres aren't too big and awkward. Yeah. Tyson would have to be right up there as well. Nathan Zygmunt, the way he was competing over in China when he won it over there, and he's looking pretty fit at the moment. Stone loading was good. Yeah. Put him up there. I honestly couldn't pick anybody. Um, like Andrew Fraser moves well. Yeah. And cross stoppers. Ex rugby player as well. And Will, actually, he did really well in the frame and yoke this year. I think he came second or third back in the Arnolds. Yeah. So uh, he, he really surprised me with how well he did there. Last week with the women, it was really hard to pick. Not sure we were going to pick it. What's the next one? Uh, another overhead, isn't it? Log. Uh, 150 kilo log for reps. The heaviest for reps we've seen in Australia's Strongest Man. And technically then, the heaviest opening log weight we've seen in Australia's Strongest Man. They used to open at 130s and 140s. Timber log. A lot of athletes probably haven't even used a timber log as well. Pretty easy to clean. Harder to press, balance issues, a little bit longer. Yeah. I believe it's also head to head. Two logs? Does that sound right? Or am I way off the mark? That's your secret news for the day. Okay then. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, don't call that secret news everyone, that's just me making stuff up. For some reason I thought it was head to head. I'd be looking at Coco as a favourite. <clears throat> Corey's pressing's come along well. Um, Thomas Wren seems to have the numbers. Andrew Fraser this week's hit the numbers as well. Luke Reynolds hit three or four reps recently as well. Yep. Um, uh, Vernon, we know, is good for the weight. I'd definitely call Coco first on this as far as log, but it's going to be, I reckon Luke Reynolds will be riding his tail. I'll be calling six reps to win it. Okay, sixth and final event, Stones. So, Max Stone starting it, it'll be stupid numbers, and I reckon we're going to probably see about four or five of them hit a 200 stone on this Max Stone. They've got to load to 1.2 metres. It's how far beyond that we're going to go, and it's going to be really hard to get because the stone's going to get bigger in size. Mason dropped on us this week that the women's stone we called last week, the 150 and the 140 are the same size and we yep. said no one's going to hit the 150 because it was bigger. So this week I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Mason I know he's got to carry heap of stones. Probably we're going to see a 200, 205, 210, 215. Everyone's going to hit, oh not everyone, but I reckon we're going to see probably four or five guys hit this 200 stone. We know that Coco, Reynolds, Tyson Vernon. and Vernon and Zygmunt have all hit this stone in training. And Corey. And Corey, sorry, Corey's Corey hit it to 1.3. He put it to 1.3 the other yeah. day. So that's six of the nine we know for sure will hit it, or have hit it. The others we don't know just because we haven't seen them training for it. Um, there's not enough training videos out there to know, and based on comp experience, we've got these movies. Winning stones, probably for me, I reckon is going to be 205, 210. This is the sixth event. Um, they've already loaded probably three to four heavy stones before this. For them to go to 215, 220, I think is going to be a really big ask because they've done so many reps before that and yeah. events. I'd be putting um, Corey and Reynolds as the big names up there to load it because of their sheer size is a real advantage. So I don't know how big this stone is going to be. Yeah, if the 210 is bigger than the 200. Yeah. That makes it a lot worse. Yeah. Um, based on previous and current history, I'd be putting. Um, 
Coco was my choice for first place, second and third. What are you, what are you looking at? I'm laughing at anything interesting? <laughs> yeah, really interesting. <laughs> so, breaking news has come in. Oh. And so my season is cruelly ripped from under me again. Next Wednesday, I'll have my left bicep reattached surgically after tearing it off last night repairing Gray SM. 12 years, 100 career contests, and so many injuries and surgeries. I thought maybe I'd paid enough. Apparently not. Maybe the deep pit of pain is bottomless. God damn, I hate this shit sometimes. And this is Luke Reynolds, it appears, has just two minutes ago posted it that he has torn his bicep. So, that just ruins so, so much the whole video. Yeah, so much for the whole video. We called him, we called him as the top one for a couple of events there. And we're just about to call him as, a, we did call him as one of the stone leaders. So, uh, Corey and Nathan, you're going to have to step up and uh, do well on the stones. And I think I think we're gonna have a four-way tie on a 400 kilo on a 200 kilo stone. Who's gonna win it though? Don't know. Yeah, who knows? Okay, depends so how people go by the end of the day. Top uh, three, top two, top five for the whole comp after five events for Australia's strongest man 2019. Who are you calling? Now I've got to rethink the whole thing. Yeah. Fuck. Fucking Luke. <laughs> so selfish. Doesn't think about anyone else. Jeez. Who needs a bicep, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what are you doing searching your phone halfway through our conversation anyway? Breaking news. <laughs> Who sent you the text saying, look, today. someone sent you a text saying, look at this. Just popped up. <laughs> okay. Um, top three, you'd have to be stupid to knock back the top place person from last year. Yeah. Um, I'll really so I think, yeah. Pick Coco for the win yeah. so far. Second and third. Okay, so for me, I reckon I'm going to be putting, I think I'll put Coco first, Corey second, Tyson third. Based on experience and strength levels and what they've been doing the past 12 months, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think they'll be the most consistent. I think a few of the others will have some really top events and then one or two that will really drop them. Cool. Oh well, that's our picking for Australia's Strongest Man for 2019. We're going to do a quick little uh, rundown on, on, on Lee because he's going to fly away next week. Off to... Daytona, Day Florida. For official strongman games. Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna take this shiny red thing with you that I've never seen before? Yeah, I've never seen it before either. Oh, so. is it is a new package in the mail from Mr. Sherry? Yeah. Oh, it looks flash. It's. I don't know if I like it yet. To okay. be honest, I never wear elbow sleeves, but oh. everyone's saying for biking press, they yeah. are the absolute shit. Ooh, they feel a bit thicker than the ones I've got. Yeah, so they're triple ply. Triple so. ply elbow sleeves. There you go, service. Quick plug, Callum, you better like us over there, Mr. Sherry. Mm -hmm. we're, lo we're looking for financial backing. If not, we're looking for taco backing. Anything will do, okay? Yeah, more sleeves, <laughs> more salts. Just okay, so official Strongman salts. Games. Yep. Talking to you about it today, we've got a big Aussie contingent going over. Yep. So we've got Narimu, current Arnold's first place getter. We've got you, who are you third place this year at Arnold's? Yep. We've got Carl Sherry in the under 80s. We've got Benny Chesham in the Masters, Rebecca Chesham in the Open Women's, Allery and Claire in the Open Women's. Red Wyard in the 82 and a half, yep. 82 women's. Uh, I think Jessica Danellan in the yep. 64 women's. And... Paul in the 105s. Paul Hoff in the 105s. And Simon Brown in yep. the 105s. Look at us about nine people. And there. there's one more. Uh-oh. Who the is this Open men's. Oh, Paul Rance. That's ASA Nationals winner. Yeah. Qualified by doing that. So, yeah. Um, as if you don't know how to get over there, you can do the ASA Nationals and you'll get over to, you can top places get a spot in the official Strongman Games or you can do like they did and qualify online. Be lazy. Because you're a lazy man. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, good luck over there, big fella. We'll be, yeah. we'll be following online. There it is, fully live streamed. You watch it on officialstrongman.com. I think it's about seven bucks a month. Does that sound about right? Ten bucks a month? I think it's less. Yeah. Maybe. Cool. That's pretty cheap. You can, um... <clears throat> Sign up, be a member, watch all the live stream when yep. it comes out, and then yep. you can just cancel it okay, straight cool. away. Yeah. Which is what Lynn says, just sign yep. up, watch what you want, yep. cancel it if you want. Because they've got the whole backlog there, you can watch all the Giants yep. live and World Strongest Man stuff on there. Okay. Uh, and all well, good luck over there, I hope all of the Aussies do well. I think it's our biggest contingent in this comp from Australia in the past, as the third running of the official Strongman Games, so go over and take the team for a win. Um, and this weekend, if Lee managed to cut and paste this in time, we've got Static Monsters Worldwide. 50 events across 19 countries. The fifth running of the event, Lee's been involved in half of them. Also current world champion in the under 90s. Yes. 
480 um, kilo total this year. Yep. Probably going to be blown out of the water. We've got Rob Ward in the UK, going to probably look at like 170 <laughs> log and a 380 deadlift in the under 90s. Yeah, he's going to put up a world record. Yeah, so new world record log. Yep. I think we're looking at new world record Almost log. Guaranteed. Yeah, new world record log in the under 80s, probably from Guy Fulton. I believe he's attempting it. There's theoretically someone in the UK as well. We're also uh, looking at new outright women's log world record. They're going to go over 122.5 kilos. That'll be Jessica Fillon in the Open Women's, Brittany Cornelius in the Open Women's. I think we're looking, Danny Vaggi may be looking at that as well, as well as looking for the 82.5 kilo women's log world record, and Kimberly Dirks. Yep. So we could have four new log world records after this weekend in the Static Monsters Worldwide. We've got some other crazy numbers. There's Dan Piggott in the UK is legally blind, an uh, uh, adaptive competitor. He just put yep. up 155 kilo log the other day. So yeah, there's going to be some huge numbers. Um, Gabriel Penner over in Texas, probably going to. He's looking to beat Jerry Pritchett's Axel Deadlift record of 479 kilos. So Jerry Pritchett said that last year. So Gabriel will be looking for that this year. Going to be a huge weekend. Tune in. There's live events all around the world. Uh, well, as I said, across 19 countries. Head to staticmonsters.com, and you can find the event under the worldwide section of the worldwide map there. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the world's ultimate strongman this Friday. That's if the video makes it before then. If you like the video, let us know, because this is our second one. Do you want us to make one when we get back? Do you want me to interview Lee on his official Strongman Games event when he gets back as well? Thank you very much, everyone. Cheers, everyone. An outtake? No. An outtake. Figure it out. <laughs> Sniff the, uh, the salts in front of the screen. <laughs> It'd be funnier if you do. <laughs> I don't really want to do this. Okay, so I hope, first time I did smelling salts, I uh, I think Coco stuck him up my nose at a powerlifting comp at Thomas' gym a few years ago. This is a test for oh. brand new server as well. You've got to smell it. I haven't yet. It went in my eye. It sucks. I'm already crying on it. Okay, get this on camera. Okay, okay, I've got to sit down and get this on camera. So this is really not fair. <laughs> oh, this sucks. No wonder I don't use it. How does Joy Conley live on that shit? Oh. Okay, thank you. That's, hey that's the other guys. And yeah, mm -hmm. we still don't know what we're talking about. Good luck at OSG, Lee.